Welcome to the car guys and this week we're going to be looking at the fastest depreciating supercars. Those exotic cars that if you purchase them new you will lose most money in year one and then even more money in years two and three. In a word, ouch. Some of them are going to be obvious, others not so much, but by the end of this episode, I promise you, you will find out which new car loses 51% of its value when you drive out of the showroom. And which car is actually worth 95% more. Wow, amazing. And of course, you'll find out which brands are the worst depreciators, which might make you think twice before buying a new one in the future. We've got 16 cars in our list, and at the end of the episode, we'll also reveal the ones that are actually increasing in value. If that sounds like your special kind of depreciating vodka, let's get on with it. Depreciation, the word that strikes fear into the heart of all supercar owners. When it comes to cost of car ownership, depreciation is often ignored for far more upfront costs like fuel, insurance, parts, servicing and tax. Actually, it's the biggest cost of all. It's the slavering dark demon that only rears its ugly head when you actually sell the car. Now, it's important to highlight that not all supercars depreciate. There are some that actually go up in value and you can sell them for more than you paid for. This is increasingly rare, but even today, if you pay list price for a Porsche GT car, like a GT3, GT3 RS, and some Ferraris, you can bask in the glow that you have an appreciating asset. And if you're an evil bastard, you can flip it for profit. Now, there are lots of causes that determine the severity of depreciation, and the cars that drop value the most often have many of these forces acting upon them. They are oversupply, bad reliability or accident record, high prices to begin with, the economy, poor reviews or reputation, and expensive options. So on the supercars that appreciate the most, there are only three parameters we use when assessing the drop in values for these cars, namely the value range 120 to 450,000. We use UK pricing for 2022, which ignores the dealer markup that you see in the USA. We've also included a year one figure and a year figure for years two to three to give a slightly more rounded view. Finally, we are basing our percentages not on the basic price, but with the cost of car with suitable options. A Ferrari 812 Superfast, for example, will rarely leave the factory without at least £50,000 worth of options. Worth also mentioning that we wanted to include the Chevrolet Corvette C8 Ooh. in this report, but we couldn't source enough data for it to be credible. It never normally stops us. <laughs> I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. So now the parameters are set, let's get on with it. There are 16 depreciating supercars on our list spread across eight manufacturers. All the household names, but what are the numbers? First up is Lamborghini, and you are thinking, oh, it must be that epically depreciating Aventador. They always lose money, right? Well, aha, uh -huh, right back at you, because actually you've forgotten that the Aventador has just been discontinued, which means prices actually are sky high. But we'll look at that in more detail at the end. At number 16 is the Lamborghini STO, which loses 6% in the first year. Not bad. Pretty much everything we know about this car comes from owner, YouTuber, Shmi150. You will no doubt recognize his car, which is now for sale. Now, 6% is a bit of a surprise because a few months ago, STOs were above list, but perhaps the sheer number made is affecting the market. Because it's new, there's no long-term figure, but given the state of the economy and interest rates, I would expect this car to suffer far greater depreciation in the future. It's also one of the cars that's too loud for the track, too extreme for the road, so the chances are its appeal is extremely limited. You can't drive it anywhere. You can't drive it anywhere. An owner's patience may well be wearing thin, which means more for sale, another sure sign that prices will drop. Next up, the Maserati MC20 at number 15 on our list. Yep, year one is a modest 10% drop due to their rarity. Brand new supercar, not a lot of data for long term. So coming to market, strong values so far. May be affected soon, the more desirable convertibles come out, the cello. Big issue as I see, MC20, it's not that great a sounding car and prof profile wise, it's quite nice looking-ish but does anyone really want one? I mean, I'm not seeing any buzz at all about the MC20. 
Yeah, very strange. The cello, I think, is probably the thing that everyone's going to want to buy. I yep. think they've sold out for the next two years of allocation or something ridiculous like that. Right, in at number 14, we've got the Lamborghini Huracan, which actually, surprising, is only a 10% depreciator in year one. 21% for years two and three. You've got to remember there's nearly 20,000 Huracans that have now been produced. That's ridiculous. Over 10,000 Aventadors. And also, with Hurricanes and Lamborghinis in general, options are very, very expensive. And everyone has that compressed carbon stuff, yeah. ev literally everywhere. Forged carbon. Forged carbon. Absolutely horrendous looking. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want it. Well, what was wrong with the old carbon? <laughs> why do you want to have a Lamborghini that looks like a Cheshire kitchen? <laughs> And if you remember, the Performante went skyward, didn't it, for the first couple of months or so when they first probably, came out? Probably first six to, and six to nine months, Performante was overs. Everyone wanted one. And then everyone suddenly realised that they're making tons of them. <laughs> Literally tons, tons of them. Tons of them. And they plummeted. <laughs> I mean, some people lost sort of 70, 80, 100 grand on a Performante. Yeah. At number 13 is the Porsche 911 992 Turbo S which depreciates in the first year 12%. Now this is a bit of a surprise because this car was actually an appreciator in its early life, but I guess now lots of supply has come in and they've started to come off a little bit. Yeah, supply and demand has come into a major factor for this car. There's loads of them about, you can get one fairly easily. And for year two, the depreciation on the Turbo S is just under 20%. So you can see it's now starting to get back to the sort of levels it probably should have been all the time. Remember, this is the range topping Porsche. It's the most expensive one. It's the one that has the most options on it. So typically, yeah, they do take a bit of a hit on the used market. Now we're on to Ferrari. The more successful Ferrari gets, the more car Ferrari sells. The more models it launches means it increasingly risks getting caught in the depreciation trap. And this is certainly the case for the majority of Ferraris on sale today. Yeah, Ferrari's caught in a pincer movement of increased production, extremely high basic prices, and it has one of the highest cost levels of options of any supercar maker. The higher the cost of the car, the further it has to fall. Waiting lists for all models are high, often three to four years, which means if you want one now, you have to buy a used one, which is helping to prop up values and keeping them well below the levels seen just a few years ago. So at number 12, we've got the Ferrari SF90, which drops 14% of its value in the first year. And I have to confess, I thought this would be a lot higher. And in fact, it used to be but values have started to creep up. Yeah, very strange. The SF90 never really been uh, appreciated. It's always been a kind of bloody hell, that's very expensive hybrid. Do we really want one of those? You can expect a modestly spec SF90 to drop 60,000 pounds in year one, which actually, if you think about it, it's actually not too bad. So this was a real shock because tales of plunging SF90 values are legendary, but it would appear that it's a rarity. It's a special performance, the weightedness of keeping values surprisingly high. Certainly six months ago, a hundred grand instant drop as you drove the thing out of the showroom was not uncommon. At number 11, the Ferrari F8 Spider, which sees a 15% drop in value in year one, which is higher than expected because let's face it, this is the sexiest F8 and convertible ones usually hold up quite well. Yes, however, this car costs £300,000 when it's specced up. The higher the cost, the further it has to fall. Now, a bit of a shocker in at number 10. What is it? It's the Ferrari Roma. Oh. At a cool 17% in the first year. Now, I would have thought, this would be much, much higher than 17%. You don't see very many of them, which means... It's got means... 25% written all over it. <laughs> hasn't it? Yeah. Hasn't it? So a fully specced up Roma can add 60K to the purchase price of 171,000. Yet, since it's still new, second-hand prices are holding up well, around 200K. This is a car that appeals to more people than you'd think. I think yeah. there's a lot of people appreciating it, a lot of new colours coming out. I think, basically, it's a sort of sleeper in the range. And because also it's not as expensive as some of those other cars, it doesn't have as far to fall. I mean, 17% drop in year one is still quite a chunk of change. <laughs> yes. But I agree. I thought maybe this one might be even more. At number nine, the Ferrari F8 Tributo. So this is the Coupe F8. And it drops in year one... 18% of its value, so only a little bit more than the Spider, And that's possibly because both cars have had pretty long waiting lists and they're just so hard to get hold of. Looking at years two and three, it's gonna drop 23%. So 
you know, a 280,000 pound car, you're gonna lose about 65K. But that's not unusual. If you remember your 488. Oh, do we have to? Do we have to go That there? was 70. Yeah. That was. was 70. So actually the F8, although it's a 488 in a dress, is actually holding up better than the old car. Yeah, and at number eight, we've got a real shock because we both thought this would be in the top three. <laughs> Ferrari's 812 Superfast. Now we're seeing at the moment drops of about 20% of value in year one. Uh, that is far better than it used to be. Not so long ago, you could have easily thrown away a hundred grand on a 300 or 400 grand 812 super fast but now prices have actually been getting a little bit more robust whether that's because people are talking about the fact that it's the last naturally aspirated ferrari v12 or that they're so hard to get but certainly 812 values have been increasing big v12 engined ferraris tend to lose their shirt they tank right they yeah. do tank yeah these four seaters especially but I think with the 812, it's been a really popular car. There's lots of them about how values are staying high because people really want them. You know, you see something on Auto Trader. It's not there a couple of weeks later. The churn is quite good. It's obviously a very valued car. And we've driven one. Go and have a look at our video. It is an amazing bit of kit. For used buyers, this is quite good news. You can get a slightly cheaper car, but you know it's not going to fur but you know it's not uh, going to fall. Perkin. 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 It's not going to fall. Fall any further. <laughs> okay, in at number seven, another Ferrari, the Portofino. And really more likely the Portofino M as well, because that's the sort of current one that's out there, the slightly hotter version. Year one depreciation, 20%. You shouldn't buy one of these cars anyway, frankly, because they're not a real Ferrari. They're horrible. They're all, honestly, it's an awful, awful car. Why would you buy one? Seriously. Now, I'm sure you, if you've got one of these, I'm sure you love it. I'm sure it's a brilliant car. I think these were going to be worse. I thought this was going to be 75% in the first year. <laughs> well, the thing is as well, this is one of the few Ferraris that you can probably still buy new and that's There's a because... reason for that. <laughs> hey, we made another Ferrari Portofino. <laughs> is there a waiting list? No, no, no waiting list. And in at number six is the Audi R8 V10. At last, not a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, something a bit more normal. But perhaps because it's so normal, that's why it loses 22% of its value in the first year. And you can expect to lose 23% in years two to three. So the problem with the Audi R8 V10 is it is a fantastic car, but it kind of just looks like an Audi and it doesn't have the glitz, the glamour, the passion of a supercar. So a lot of people discount it. A lot of people don't pay any attention to it. It does mean it is an incredible used buy. Very cheap to buy used and you are getting a hell of a car. But if you are the first owner, then you can expect to lose quite a chunk of change. Really, I think people have struggled to pay £135,000 for an Audi. Yeah, I totally agree with that. They are a second-hand bargain. Have you ever thought about getting an R8? Yeah, V10. Really? Yeah, because they are, they are an incredibly accomplished car. Oh, This is a big one. <laughs> okay, here we go then. Number five. Right, into so the top five now. we're now. getting into some serious, serious bits of kit. Big numbers. Mercedes-Benz AMG GTR. Really? I thought... I thought they would do quite well. Well, no, and I'm going oh. to break this to you gently. You're going to do it. It's going to be like a plaster, you know, rip it off really quickly so okay. it doesn't sound... Right, so your first year's depreciation, yep. 28%. 28%! That's a lot, isn't it? That's nearly 30. If you've paid £180,000 yep. for GTR, you're, yep. you're going to lose, as near as makes no difference, 60 grand. Yeah. Wow. As you drive it out the showroom, a lot, as with a lot of the Mercedes range, especially the AMG cars, is they all kind of look the same. Yeah. You know, a, a C-series diesel that slips up and down the motorway doesn't look too different to uh, an AMG 63. Or an S600 Maybach. Or an S600 Maybach. They brought out a four-door model, which is surely the kiss of death. Yeah. But you've also got like the GT and you've got the GTS. Yeah. And then the R, but they, they all look the same. And I think that just takes away the specialness of the R. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I also get the sense that maybe Mercedes has made quite a lot of them. So there's, a, there's quite a decent number on the market. Yeah, yeah, you can easily get one. Yeah. So again, a used 
bargain. bargain really because you are getting an incredible car for the money but if you are that first owner whew, you're going to lose a lot yes talking of shitting the bed the mclaren 720s spider is in at number four and this car loses a not inconsiderable 32 percent of its value as soon as you take it out the dealership now that is frankly terrifying because a 720 is a very, very expensive car. There are <laughs> lots out there that are 400,000 quid. There are lots of them that are mid 300s. It's a hell of a chunk of change. And what's also worrying is that this is the convertible and this is the one that usually does better. This is the desirable one. So we're at number four. Where do we think the 720 coupe is going to be? I think I know. <laughs> I think I know where it's going to be. The problem McLaren has got, and it's always had, is the reliability has always been questionable in the 720s. There's been a lot of social media about people's cars being in the garage for most of their lives and never being on their driveways. I think some of that stuff has been fixed now, and I think you know more iterations of them, that they've got better, but that stigma is still there. And that's what's causing these problems. Yeah, I mean, the dealership network has had a lot of stick. So, you know, you, things go wrong, but then it takes a long time to fix them. They're very expensive anyway. The options are incredibly expensive. They made loads of them. Basically, it's the perfect stall. <laughs> and just in case you were wondering, in years two and three, we're talking 40%. <sighs> ouch, 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 ouch. Ouch, And for high mileage ones, that goes up. So if you've actually used your 720... <laughs> which you won't have done. Which you won't, because it's always the been in the garage. But yeah. let's say, for example, you'd put... I don't know, over 5,000 miles on your 720, that 40%, you're going to be wishing for 40% depreciation. And now we're at number three, or as I like to call it, the Aston Martin zone. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, dear. You've got to feel sorry for these people, haven't you? Yeah, because this is obviously a, a great British brand, but the cars, in terms of depreciation, they are a little bit tricky. We've only got two in the list, and we're in the top three. So that gives you an idea how tricky it is. <laughs> but uh, the first one at number three, which loses 36% of its value straight away, is the Aston Martin Vantage, the new Vantage. Uh, what's even worse is that it loses, I can't even believe I'm going to say this, 47% in years two and three. That's 47. half its value. Yeah. Half, half of its value. Gone. 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 Just gone. So why do we think that is? I know I've... I, I know what I think it is. It's basically a Mercedes in a dress. It reuses the switch gear from all Mercedes. Gearbox. The gearbox, the, the engine. Interiors, the engine. Interior, yeah. the whole thing. And it's got those silly little headlights on it. That oh, make yes. it look like an MX-5. Yes, I've forgotten about that. So, you know. That's probably 10% of the depreciation <laughs> right there. I mean, they've tried really hard to put different colours on it and different lines to try and make people. But honestly... No. I've always been a big fan of like the baby Astons. I had a V8 Vantage, the old one, glorious, but it suffers from similar problems to the modern one, which is a dated cabin. Um, the reliability was a little bit in question and the parts prices were eye-watering. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, so you had yeah, a hell of a lot of issues with them. It's way, I agree with you, it's way too much AMG, not enough Aston and really you're losing 60 grand in year one on on not an, a very expensive car No, so what do you think well, should we should we move on to number the second one? Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah number two on the list the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera 37% in the first 30 seconds of ownership. Yeah, and that's a big number, but also remember the DBS costs a fortune, so it's a big number of on a, a big, big number. Car. Again, same thing, reliability, quality issues. They're extremely expensive. Servicing costs are frankly unfathomable, especially when Ferrari basically put a service plan in for three years. No, seven years. Seven years. Seven years free servicing. They're thirsty on fuel. You can't bloody insure the things. And they're a lot for sale at the moment as well. You know, it's, it's well, not, not hard to find. You've got expensive car, lots of expensive options. Expensive, Reliability, yeah. AMG, insurance, fuel. I mean, just everything acting on this. Acting against that car. Yeah. It's not a bad car. No, it's a great, it's a it's a beautiful, fast GT car with with quite a dated interior. And now we get 
to number one, the fastest depreciating supercar <laughs> in the world, <laughs> according to the car guys. Extensive data analytical tools. <laughs> Research and not at all just flumming through Auto Trader <laughs> with a with a cold beer. Yeah. Not, not that. Yeah, no. like, like this. Yeah. So at number one, and I do not think obviously there's any surprise here whatsoever because it's like the poster child of depreciation. <laughs> yes, isn't it though? It's the one you all think of. <laughs> it is, of course, the McLaren 720S, the coupe version. And that loses drum roll, please. <laughs> 42% of its value in the first Holy year. Holy depreciation, Batman. <laughs> Honestly, 42% yeah. of a car that's, what, three... Minimum 300,000 quid, really. Three, 350, sometimes nearly 400,000. And you're losing 42% of that money yeah. straight out the door. You could be losing £175,000 <laughs> by turning the key. Or pressing the button because it's probably in a no, in a no single key. year, yeah. a single year where they that car could may or may not be in the McLaren dealership for eight months of that year. Yeah, not working. So this really is. We talked about a perfect storm before. I ain't got nothing on this baby. Wow. This is the perfect storm starring Mark Wahlberg. This has got high, super high purchase price, super high options. You've got reliability. You've got dealer issues. You've got you've got, it's got costs coming all over the place, and also you've got a real crisis of confidence in the brand. You've got people staying away. You've got very visible tales of these cars spending lots of times in the dealership. So even though it is, and this isn't even within doubt, one of the greatest supercars you can buy. If you buy it new, yeah, you're going to hemorrhage money. So this is the perfect car to buy used, hopefully once all them reliability issues have, have been fixed yeah. by the dealer. Um, but what you're getting for your money when you're talking about a car that used to be 350, 400,000 quid and you can pick it up for 150, it's the performance bargain of the decade. You're talking about buying a second hand car, two or three years old for less money than you would lose in the first year of buying a new one. Yeah, yeah. Just think on that for a minute. And if you think the bad news ends after the first year, spoiler alert, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. No, because 52%. In, years, in years two and three, we're at 52%. And actually probably more than that if you've done something silly like Spect It Purple. So that rounds out our depreciators list. Yep. I don't think there's any massive surprises in there. Well, I expected a lot more 30 and 40% droppers in yeah. there so i was actually quite surprised to see some of them at more modest levels i thought we were going to have an absolute bloodbath some of them are holding up surprisingly well and they're not losing quite as much as you thought so if you pick right you can actually get away with not losing too much cash on a supercar on a supercar now we have another list yes we've got some positive news if you're lucky enough to get one of these cars which have actually gone up in value over their original purchase price with options. The first one is the Ferrari 812 GTS, not the super fast, but the convertible version. This is currently showing either a staying at the price plus options or about 1% increase. So it's not a huge one, but the fact that you could buy an 812 GTS and not lose anything on it is a revelation. <laughs> it's frankly astonishing. A bit of a shocker, this one. The, which I thought was going to be on the other list. Yep. The Lamborghini Aventador. The Lamborghini Aventador? Yeah, they always lost 100 grand, didn't they? Always. However, they have just been discontinued, and they are actually trending up by 15%. Yeah. So if you could get one of these cars, you are living the dream. I mean, obviously, yeah. you're understeering to the next roundabout. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you'd be very cramped and yeah. hot and, and you hot. Might, might burst into flames. But, you know, apart, but apart from, that, from any of that... If your dream is to crash and burn... <laughs> buy yourself an Aventador. <laughs> and another car that is currently appreciating hard and no surprises at all if you're in this community, it is the Porsche 911 GT3, the 992. These cars are currently going for 30% over 
the price plus options. They are surging. It is very rare to find a new GT3 that isn't at least 200 grand. Bear in mind the base price was 136,000. So there is one car on our list, the appreciation list, that increases value so ridiculously so as ridiculous. to be scarcely believable. Yeah, but this is an ultra rare car. It is. Okay, it's only built in very small numbers. There's loads of options. Go on, get on with it. Tell them, tell them, tell them what it okay. is. It's the Ford GT. Yeah. A whopping 95% appreciation. That's double the price, people. Double the price. <laughs> if you manage to get a Ford GT, you are laughing constantly. No wonder Schmee's always <laughs> so laughing. Happy. Yeah, look no at wonder. him. Look at him. The car itself was very high. It's like 380,000 pounds. Uh, you actually had to enter a lottery to get one, and Ford did a really good job of controlling who the owners were to stop people speculating and flipping. But as a result, the few that come to market, uh, they are nearly £800,000. Ford GT is an absolute star when it comes to supercar appreciation. Yes, it is. So there you go. The fastest appreciating supercar is the McLaren 720S. No surprises there. Our condolences if you bought one new. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you found it entertaining and interesting and useful. And I hope we enlightened your life in some way. Like we always do every week. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Ding the notification bell for when we've got another film uploaded. Find us on Instagram. Very tinyly on Twitter. Very small. <laughs> yeah, very small. A very very small, small Twitter presence. Yeah, we've got small Twitter. Don't forget the Twitter. Don't forget the merch. Buy the merch. Yeah, there's the merch. It's coming up to Christmas. It's coming up to Christmas. Look at all the t-shirts, people. Look at that. Hoodies. And there'll be another episode of The Car Guys next week.